Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So today we're working on the multi-band HF amplifier. This is my own personal amp. It's not for sale. If I make another one someday, it'll be with all new parts and a new cabinet. I'm reusing an old RF generator cabinet. If you look at the other videos, you'll see what the panel looks like. This is the wall behind the panel. This is the RF deck portion. There'll be the power supply and then external transformers. So I'm reusing parts I have around the shop. Like I said, if I build another one, I'll have new parts in it. But I'm trying to keep this down, price down as much as I can since I'm not being paid to make this. And I'm putting some other work aside to work on this. So I'm waiting on some parts for the Heathgate SP220 and I have some amps uh, being dropped off uh, early next week. So, and some more coming FedEx. So while I have some time, I'm working on it. So you can see I added the vernier drives, the gear reduction drives. So I had to measure everything out, make sure they're equally spaced, and it just takes time. Band switch slash rotary switch I pulled out of a TL922. You see it right there, it's progressively shorting. Put the detent assembly in. The two uh, capacitors, these are used in, uh, in the older SP220s on the load side and the load side on SP200s. I high potted them, I put them in the dishwasher, cleaned them really well. Yes, the dishwasher. They high pot above 1400. I only have around like 200 volts or so. So these are more than enough for the application. I was going to use the four section type like this, but they're just too long. So I'll have the coil will be on standoffs and tap it and everything. So the good thing about this switch is I can add padding capacitance on each cap. One switch for one, the other switch for the other. And like I said, it's progressively shorting. So when I get to 80, I'm going to add 1,200 on this one, 1,200 on that one. And then to, uh, when I switch into 160, there will be an additional 2,000. So I'll have, these were around like 900 picofarads, so 900 something. So I'll have 900 something plus uh, 1,200 plus another 2,000 all in parallel. And that will allow me adjustment. And like, uh, I like, another thing I like about the two section, the capacitance won't vary as quick so it won't be as touchy but I'm going to have turns counters on the front and plus I have the reduction drives so it's going to work awesome so I have two standoffs holding it to the wall these things are rock solid not going anywhere I have a piece of copper strap connecting to the floor I thought about putting a bracket but I didn't want to do that because I'm going to have other components mounted under here and there's not much current across these so that is uh, pl that's plenty that's more than enough right there so I'm going to mount the doorknob, some doorknob caps under here for the padding caps. I have to order those. I might use these big caps. I already have them. I'm mount one here. They don't have to be really close. I'm not sure yet. It's just to save me from having to buy some 500 puffs. Like I said, I'm trying to save some money. So I might end up using the board for this, um, which will give me grid and plate overload protection. I'm not sure yet. And I'm going to redo the plate choke, the filament choke to the other style. You can see the, where the cap holes are, where the vacuum variables, vacuum variable capacitors for the output network are going to come out. And I'll have right angle drives so the shaft comes out the front. Like I said, another panel across this. So please stay tuned. More videos to come. And like I said, these will be paralleled, paralleled, and uh, everything connected properly. But this takes time, lots of time to do it right, measuring and making it perfecto. Like I said, nothing to copy off of. So, designing it all in my head and installing it <coughs> as I go. So, thanks for watching. Website is amprepairguy.com. Phone number is 203-892-4119. That's 203-892-4119. 73.